Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches and welcome to my channel where together we sew. This week on my channel um, we're going to be working on my spring secret garden mystery quilt and we're going to work on the next block which you can see here behind me. There. there. <laughs> this is the peony block so this is uh, week two and don't forget if you're sewing along with me you can grab the patterns for free off of my website and I'll put that link down below in the description box um, we're gonna make two of each block each week so it's six weeks of blocks and then the seventh week will be the finishing um, if you bought the kit for me you've got all your fabrics uh, and I will um, tell you what to grab but if you did not buy the kit and you're sewing along with your scraps that's not a problem either I want to include as many people as possible and I hope you guys are enjoying this so far and I can't wait to get started. So let's get working on this peony block. As always, I'm going to stop my camera and move the move it down so you guys can see what I'm sewing, how I'm laying out the block. Um, you won't see me for a little bit. I will talk you through the block and then at the end we'll come back together and um, get uh, this done. So super excited for this one. I love peonies. If you haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> I've named every block after a flower, and they're all flowers I love or that remind me of spring. And uh, peonies used to grow at my old home, so um, when I started designing this block, I was thinking about pink flowers because we had pink peonies. So <laughs> I'm really excited to do this one, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are. I've got all the fabric laid out. Um, I did sew a few pieces ahead of time just to make this go a little quicker and easier, um, but I have some of all the pieces here to show you. So um, I'm not going to go through all the sizes because if you download the PDF uh, of the block on my website, which will be linked in the description box below, you'll have all the sizes, um, but this is the center of the block, and then you're going to have some pink rectangles like this, some small green squares, and small white background squares, and then you're going to have some larger white background squares, larger green background or larger green squares and larger pink squares. So all these fabrics here, I'm going to put aside for now. Those will come into play later and first we're going to make half square triangles. So I did sew some of them ahead of time so they're not all here, but all of the large green and all the large pink, we're going to match with a background square and we're going to turn these into half square triangles. So first thing you need to do is grab a ruler and mark a line from corner to corner so from this corner to that corner on the back of all of your background squares the larger size background squares so I'm going to do that now use your favorite marking pen I like friction pens but you can use chalk marker you can use a water soluble pen whatever you like and we're going to draw a line just like that. Now, we're going to sew a quarter inch to either side of that line. So, for those of you who um, are afraid that the line might show or come back later, it doesn't matter. We're actually going to cut right down that line when we cut the triangles apart because we're going to make two half square triangles at a time. Um, so, we'll never see that. Uh, so, whatever marking tool you like the best, you can go ahead and mark with no fear that it's going to be on your fabric. So, I'm going to put that away because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to match that up with my green and match this one up with my pink. And like I said, I've pre-sewn some of the other half square triangles just to save some time already. So, um, but all of, every single one you're going to, of the larger size green and large size pink, are going to get a background square and you're going to sew all those together. I'm going to sew a quarter inch on either side of that line. And the way I write my patterns, I always have you sew a quarter inch seam. I don't love the scant quarter inch business stuff. <laughs> it kind of drives me crazy. Um, and I always have you make half square triangles by doing two at a time and then trimming them down to the size that they need to be. It does produce a tiny bit of fabric waste, but um, 
then you don't have to worry that if you don't have the perfect quarter inch or the scant quarter inch or whatever you want to call it, um, that your blocks will end up being too small. Because once they're too small, they're harder to fix than if they're too big. If they're too small, then we either have to figure out how to add some fabric or start all over, which then you have to waste that piece. So I like to do it this way the best. Okay, so first I'm going to start by cutting these two apart. You can cut with your rotary and a ruler if you like right on that line. I'm just going to use my scissors and cut them apart. These are super sharp scissors and I have that line drawn so I feel like I'm going to be pretty close to what it needs to be. I'll cut this one apart. And then we're going to iron these to the dark side, so away from the white, and then we're going to trim them down to three and a half inches. So let me grab my iron and my ironing board, and um, we will iron these up and then trim them down. So hold on just a minute. Okay, I've got my pressing pen, which I use in almost every video, so I'm sure you guys have already seen me use it. I just love it. It helps get these blocks nice and flat. So I'm going to put that on all the seams and then press these open, or not open, I'm sorry, to the dark side. I'm going to press them to the dark side. Just finger press it first, that kind of helps it go where I want it to. And these blocks will be very oversized when you open them up. That's okay. We're going to trim them down to three and a half inches. The nice thing about doing this way is you don't have to be absolutely precise when you're sewing. So perfect for a brand new beginner quilter that might not be so confident in your seam allowance yet, but you still will end up with a nice block because we're trimming to the correct size. Okay, move my ironing board out of the way. Put my little iron down on it. Now I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and my ruler, and I'm gonna trim these to three and a half inches square. So most um, grab a paper over here. Most rulers have this diagonal line here. And that's what I'm going to put right on my seam that I just sewed to trim these. Or if you've got a block lock ruler or the clearly perfect slotted trimmers, that would work too. And trim these down to three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut those two sides off and then turn it around and put it right on that same line. Make sure that's straight before you trim. There's no going back once you cut it. <laughs> so there we go. These out of the way. I love this little trim bin that um, I have here, so I can just throw everything in there. see there's a little bit of scrap but it's not so much that we're not wasting too much fabric it just allows you to get these blocks 
sized nice and perfect. I have followed lots of patterns in the past where they have you make them just barely over what the half square tri triangles need to be. And if my seam allowance was one thread over, the squares were too small. So I like to do it this way. Okay. And one more. Now you're going to be making eight um, of the pink half square triangles and eight of the green. Like I said, I already did some of them ahead of time because these do take a little bit of time between the sewing, the cutting, and all the pressing. So I didn't want to be on camera for over an hour showing you how to make half square triangles because most people know how to make them. And if you don't, I did demonstrate them in my last block and then in this block a little bit. So, okay, so I'm gonna bring these back over here. Close the rotary cutter. Actually, I think I can put that away. I don't need that anymore. So now what we're gonna do is the pink rectangles are gonna go with the pink half square triangles. And then the green solid square and the white solid square are gonna go with these green half square triangles. So how we're gonna do this is we are making our, our leaf part of this flower. So we're gonna put a white background square in the upper left hand corner, the green solid square in the lower right hand corner. We're gonna put this leaf piece with the white towards the bottom left and this piece, the white towards the upper right. So we're gonna make it like a four patch. So I'm gonna flip this over and sew these two together and then sew these two together. So you're going to make um, four of these units all together. So if I hadn't pre-sewn things, I would have them piled in sets of four and just keep sewing them together. So that's why I recommend that'll help speed up your sewing just a little bit. And now I'm going to take the top piece and flip it down on the bottom and nest those seams right in the middle. I'm actually going to pin right here in the middle. Yes, I'm using a pin. <laughs> I almost never pin, so it's a, a rare thing. And then I'm gonna start on the end and sew a quarter inch all the way down and join the, the leaf sections together. right in the right spot. Now when I iron this, I'm going to iron this down like the this green down. So I'm just going to finger press that a little bit to get it to kind of go where I want it to until we bring the ironing board back out. Now I'm going to set that aside for a minute so I can iron everything all at one time and I'm going to put these pinks together the way they need to go. So this is going to make the outer part of our flower petals. So you want to have the whites touching each other and sew those together. Kind of like star legs. So if you can imagine, this is how we're gonna put it together. So it's kind of it's gonna look like star legs, although we're not building a star. We're building a flower. 
So putting the weights together, If we open this up, and I'm just going to finger press this seam, just like this, and now I'm going to sew this rectangle onto that piece I just made. Sew the pink to the pink. Make sure you're not sewing the pink to the white. Pink to pink. <laughs> I do recommend when you press this to press that seam open that I just finger pressed open. I tried doing it to the left or the right and it got a little bit bulky right there. So um, yeah, that's why I did it that way. And then this one I'm going to press towards this big pink rectangle. So I'm going to bring my iron back up again. put it down here out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, that point came out very well. I'm happy about that. Now, if you are a beginner and you need some more help with the seam allowance, um, if you have a quarter inch foot, that's probably the best way to get a consistent um, seam allowance right now until um, you don't need it anymore. Or you could use diagonal seam tape, which I have on my machine here. You can kind of see it in the video. It's like a washi tape that has drawn lines that shows the red line in the center is your center line, and then there's a black line on either side, and those are both quarter inch seam allowances. Okay, I'm going to press this one down, and then we can put our flower together. This one isn't very complicated, but there's, um, the half square triangles, as you guys know, can take a while to, uh, sew and then iron so that's why I did some ahead of time and trim uh, but nothing difficult here okay so this away again that way it's out of the way and you guys can see what I'm doing okay so this is how we're going to build this so I already did one section just to show you guys so we're going to take a leaf section and put it on either side of a pink section. And then um, we're going to put the yellow piece right in the middle. That's going to be the center of our flower. And there's going to be a pink on either side. And then here's the last leaf section that we're going to build. Just like this. So hopefully you guys can see this. There you go. So we're gonna build this like a night patch. So we're gonna put these three together, these three together, and of course I've already sewn these three together. So I'm gonna put this up here out of the way. It can become the top row, I suppose. And when you iron these, I ironed the top and I'm gonna iron the bottom row in and I'm gonna iron the middle row, the yellow, out. Because I think this darker pink will show through the yellow, so I didn't want to iron it that way. But before we get to the ironing, let's go ahead and sew these rows together. One 
piece. I'm going to sew this side on this. I just love the colors of this block. So springy. So um, yesterday it got to the 50s here in Ohio and got actually warmer overnight, which is unusual. I think it got up to about 58 degrees and we had still piles of snow because nothing had melted from the last snow. I got up this morning, looked out the front window and there was no snow. <laughs> it was all gone because we got rain in 58 overnight. So that took care of all the snow. But later today we have a winter storm warning. <laughs> so this evening it's supposed to turn from rain to sleet to snow and we are once again going to get snow and it's supposed to be like 18 degrees i am really really ready for spring that little tease yesterday with the warmer weather yeah that told me i was definitely ready for spring and these colors are really making me wish spring was here so very soon i'm sure because after this little snowstorm, I think by Sunday it's supposed to be back in the 50s again. So starting to see little glimpses of spring, which is fun. Okay, so let's put this together and then we will iron these two rows. I've already ironed the one that I previously did and then we'll put the rows together. Okay, there's that. So I'll grab my pressing pen. Now you can press on either side, either the front or the back of the material. I've had people say they were afraid to iron on the front, but I've never had a problem with um, the liquid from this. It is a clear liquid. Um, when you iron, it pretty much goes away. I've never had it run, made any fabric dyes run. Um, if you're nervous about that, that's fine. You can press them in the back. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I, I've never had a problem and I've put it on the back or I put it on the front. So, plus, once we wash this, all the starch, like the best press, and this will all wash away. All those kind of things wash away as soon as you wash your quilt. So, All right, I'm gonna bring my iron up here and iron these guys, and then we can put the rows together and then we'll be done. Just trying to keep the iron down out of the way today so you guys can see my block because somebody mentioned that they couldn't see everything because my iron was in the way. So hopefully that's helped a bit. I didn't realize it was a problem. Um, but I want to try to make this easy for you guys so you can see. I can't change the size of my sewing space or my sewing table. I can't make it bigger, so I'll do the best I can. And also, um, just to let you guys know too, um, somebody had mentioned like, they don't like it when I'm sewing and they can't see me talking. I only have one camera. I, that's, that's all I have. And so I'm sorry about that. If you guys want to see what I'm sewing, which I think is more important than seeing me talk, <laughs> I have to point my camera down. So I'm, I apologize if that doesn't work for you. Um, but that, that's what I have to do. So yeah, I just wanted to let you all know that I would love to be looking at you too, but <laughs> I think that you probably would rather see the block being sewn together than watching my face. So I'm still talking to you. I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Those are sewn together. Oops. Put my iron back down for a minute. We'll sew the rows together and then we'll press the whole thing. So, this is how that's going to go. It's all laid out nice, nice. 
Oh, it's so pretty. I love these colors. Okay, so I'm going to flip the middle row onto the top row and I am going to make sure that these seams right here nest. I'm not really worried about anything else in the rest of the row because it'll all be fine, but I am going to pin right here at these intersections. And we're going to do the same thing for the top and the bottom because they're identical. So. We'll sew that together and then we'll put the bottom row on and then we'll press it all out. Now I didn't talk to you guys about this in the last video for the first block. Somebody asked me a great question and said, which way do they press the rows? Um, I didn't even realize that I forgot to tell you all, but I've just been pressing them away from the center. So the top row up and the bottom row down. Um, just so there's like not a bunch of stuff in the center block because I feel like because the center block is the largest piece if you have see a lot of seams sticking through it's going to be pretty obvious so but you can press it any way you want if you want to press it all up all down you want to press them open towards the center away from the center this is my pattern but it will end up being your quilt so whatever you're most comfortable with or whatever you like I will tell you at the end we're going to put sashing around all the blocks so none of the blocks are going to have to like nest each other so you don't have to worry about that okay now I'm going to sew the bottom row on the onto the center piece here Pin that one together. Sew this last seam and we're all done. Now don't forget to make two of these. I'm only making one with you guys. If you remember from last week. Um, but we need two of each block. So this will, once we finish this, this will conclude week two, and then we'll have four more weeks of blocks, and then the seventh week, so it would have been six weeks of blocks, and then the seventh week, we will put everything all together, and I'll show you the layout. Now, I played with the layout quite a bit to decide what blocks go where. Um, but you definitely can do them however you like as well. And don't forget to post on Facebook and Instagram if you've got it. You can tag me Stephanie Stitches or you can tag Stephanie Secret Garden quilt. be fun so we could see everybody's blocks especially if you're using your own fabric I would love to see your blocks perfect okay yay so my seams came out really well so there is the peony and I am just gonna have to I, the only thing I have left to do is to iron it and like I said you can either you can either iron up you can iron down you can iron open whatever way you like it's not going to affect the rest of the quilt because we are going to put eventually put sashing strips around each block so nothing has to none of the blocks have to nest so whatever way you like and whatever way makes it the flattest so that's that okay so as you can see behind me I have two peony blocks made uh, every week don't forget to make your second block we're only making one together and then you'll have to make the other one on your own um, they should only take you about an hour to do two blocks um, for the first two sets if you've done the first week and the second week 
Now as we go forward, the blocks are gonna get a little bit harder. They're not hard to sew, there's just more pieces. Um, these were the two easiest blocks to do, so um, I'm gonna get you to a beginner advanced level. <laughs> And uh, don't be intimidated though, we're still gonna go step by step through each one, um, but they will take a little bit longer, so expect that next week the video to be slightly longer. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for sewing along. I cannot wait to see all of your blocks and your quilts at the end. I would really love it if you would post a picture of what you've done so far on social media, on my Facebook page, Stephanie Stitches. I'm also Stephanie Stitches on Instagram. If you want to post a picture on Instagram and tag me, that would be awesome. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.